Yo, what is up YouTube? James Beck here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 17 Back to Battles and this is going to be the post regionals video. If you don't know, I did attend it. I attended CT uh, the week before and then I had Florida, but yeah, we're back. We have Ralph Dude's team, third place in the world. So let's play some Pokemon VGC once again. Top of Coco, Salamence, Snorlax, Persian, Marax, LC. Let's get into it. If you can't tell, my rating did reset because I did have to. Um, I had some warm up battles at the hotel before Daytona uh, just to check if I, you know, I always like to warm up before regionals. I at least do two battles on Battle Spot just to, you know, get the mind moving, get the brain functioning, get the gears turning. But we got Willy as our first opponent uh, with the team of Tapu Fini, Garchomp, Arcanine, Pelipper, Kartana, and Tapu Koko. My team is the Tapu Koko. Well, I really told you my team, so I don't think we <laughs> have to go through that again. So we got Pelipper without no, with no rain. Um, very safe Persian uh, Persian Tapu Koko looks like it's just very safe here in my opinion. Um, I think Marak is also pretty safe, and I think Salamence is really okay here. A Celesteel could be good if my opponent doesn't bring the rain mode, but I think I want another answer to the Kartan just in case. But yeah, so ended up coming out from regionals. CT, I didn't really do well. It was top 64, which, you know, I didn't exactly play well in that tournament, so I was kind of like okay with getting CP. I just, I don't think CT was my tournament. It just, I wasn't that comfortable with the team I was using. And yeah, I I just didn't play well. So CT was pretty much a bust, which is unfortunate because that was probably the big tournament. It had, um, you know, 220 something people and, you know, quite a bit of money on the line. And then we had Florida Regionals, which I went to next week. And let me just say Florida was a crazy ex tournament experience. It was also a big mess one as well. Um, I'm super tired. I'll, I think maybe I'll vlog. I'll tell you people all about Florida like in a separate video actually because th That's quite a long story. It's honestly there was so many things happening in Florida, but I did make top eight I didn't make top eight. I think I'll actually be sharing like um, I think I'll actually share like my tournament experience with Florida, but Yeah, <laughs> let me just say there was a lot of stuff happening. There was a lot of stuff so I didn't end up getting top eight. I ended up losing to Alberto Lara. Um, yeah, but it was a pretty fun tournament. I went six and one in Swiss. I felt amazing about how I played that day. But then again, looking at the matches that I was on stream, like I could have made way better plays. But you know, that shows I still have room to improve. Um, yeah, so Pelipper top of Fini. There's a lot of electric type attacks that could happen here. Well, not electric type attacks. Like there are a lot of possibilities. Like one Garchomp could come in too. There could be Protect Muddy Water. I think I just want to fake out the Pelipper to be honest, because it's a safe play. It looks like my opponent does feel like that's a safe play. You know, you guarantee either Tailwind, or you're guaranteed a lot of damage, especially to suspects Feeny, which I probably would assume it is on this team to be honest. Uh, so I'm gonna have to switch out Top of Coco, and I'm gonna go out to my Salamence because it is my only Water type resist. Uh, is this is a Moonblast into. Uh, the top of Coco slot, yeah, but I'm pretty sure you would go for Muddy Water, or if you're going to go for the Moonblast, you go for it on to the Persian. So let's see what my opponent's going to go for. It is going to be that Muddy Water, so here's going to be that Muddy Water. It is going to come out from the top of Fini, and it's going to do a massive amount of damage. Actually, that's not Specs. That's definitely not Specs. We get the Accuracy Drop, which is very unfortunate. But if I can knock out the top of Fini, I feel very comfortable about my position. Let's see what my opponent's going to bring out. If it's Garchomp, yeah, it's going to be Garchomp. So uh, Garchomp is really not too bad here. I get to find out if it's Scarf right away, and I'm just gonna go for the Z Fly into the Tapu Fini because I do want as much damage as possible onto it. And I'll just foul play the Garchomp because maybe I can get the rough skin damage in my favor. As we're gonna see Garchomp protect here, which is fine. And I will be able to get a Super Sound Sky Strike. I don't think this is gonna knock out Tapu Fini by any means necessary. It looks like it's a bulky Tapu Fini. It's definitely not offensive because if it was an offensive Tapu Fini, it would have done a lot more with that Muddy Water. It would have done a lot more. So I'm gonna go for Super Sound Sky Strike. It's probably I would I would guess to be honest, it would be like bold or modest or at least have a lot of physical defense investment. Well, actually, you could have special defense investment because of the fact you have Arcanine for the Intimidate. I always keep forgetting about the Arcanine. Do I always miss the KO with 1 HP? Are you serious? But that's actually okay here. I do not mind. Because my opponent went for the Moonblast into the Salamence slot, which 
allows me to get in my top of cocoa. It's actually leftovers Feeny. Good to know. So it is leftovers Feeny here. I will be able to get in my top of cocoa, and I'll be able to click Dazzling Gleam plus Foul Play. I feel like I don't really need top of cocoa for much. And once I get rid of, you know, Garchomp combined with top of Feeny. Once I get rid of those Pokemon, I feel very comfortable in my position because Marok should be able to 1v1 everything else on my opponent's team and 1v1's Cartana, as well as Arcanine, as well as Tapu Koko. So, I'm going to go for the foul play here. I could Parting Shot, but no, you don't Parting Shot on an Earthquake, potentially. Uh, I guess, how could this be bad? Tapu Fini protects, goes for the Earthquake here, but Dazzling Gleam did a lot to that Garchomp, not going to lie, that Dazzling Gleam did a lot. And this is in Life Orb. Hmm. I also expect a Gleam to do like 40% and Foul Play to do about 55, 60. So I thought it would be a roll. Uh, also, Persian didn't get into Berry Range, so that could have been really bad. And my opponent went for Protect Earthquake, uh, mate, or just went for Earthquake in general and survived the attack. But luckily, it does not happen. I feel like I had no other play anyway. If I Parting Shot, I take too much damage with Marok to where I can't 1v1 anything. And yeah, so Arcanine's gonna come out. I have. To be honest, I could just save my... I could save my Topical. Here, go on to Marak. I guess Parting Shot. The Marak, because maybe you go for Flare, but in the top of Coco. I think this is a safe defensive play. As I will get my Marak in, as well as... As an Extreme Speed comes out into the Persian, which is actually going to... Not activate my Barry, because it's a critical hit. Maybe it didn't matter, but at this point, I think I do win with my... <laughs> Like, either way, this still works out in my favor, to be honest. Um, because I do get to switch up moves here. I guess I could Sky Shop here. Well, I think Gleam would still do more. Actually, I'm just going to Shadow Bone and Volt Switch. Uh, I mean, Electro Ball here. Because if you want to get the 2 KO, like, no matter what, like, if I'm Electro Balling myself, you have to target down Marak. Because Marak's doing the more offensive damage. You have to target down Marak. And if you target down the Marak and Marak goes down, that means my top of Coco can just go for an Electro Ball and follow you up. So, we're going to see that Flare Blitz going to be coming out. I didn't want to go for Gleam there in case somehow like my opponent did have a way to take down Marak. I don't know. Go down him see Bulldoze. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, the Arcanine's pretty much going to be going down to Shadow Bone. A Rain does stop here, so its Flare Blitz are going to be more powerful. But either way, I think Shadow Bone plus like two Flare Blitz recoil damages will knock out this Arcanine. So, just keep going for Electro Ball. Extreme Speed's not going to be able to knock out Tapu Koko either. Uh, no, unless it was like a boosting item. Maybe like a Silk Scarf or something. I think that's the only way. As we're going to see the Flare Blitz in the Tapu Koko once again. As Tapu Koko is going to go down. But we will be able to get a Shadow Bone off here, and that should secure the game. It looks like Shadow Bone should be able to pick up the knockout at that range. Yeah, Shadow Bone. Does pick up the knockout on Arcanine, and that would be a good game to my first opponent. So, yeah, it could have been very, very risky. I mean, there's there were two different plays, I feel like. Well, two different turns that, if I got wrong, could have definitely hurt me in my favor. Well, could have been really bad for me, like very devastating. Turn one. With the Pelipper Tapafini and the one turn with the Guard Chomp and the low health Tapafini. Because if I didn't get the right rolls, it could have gone very bad for me, no matter what. Like, the Guard Chomp one, it didn't really matter because um, I was able to get it off and I don't think I had another play. But, you know, if, like, let's say Pelipper went for Protect and, like, a Muddy Water happened, I would have been in a pretty bad position. I would have been in an extremely bad position. Uh... Because even though it wasn't Specs Top of Fini, if it was Specs, it would have been able to pick two knockouts there, and that would have been bad. But if my opponent went for Muddy Water there, Top of Coco would have been put in extreme speed range. Persian would have been extremely weakened. It would have been extremely hard to come back from that game. But luckily, it did work out. But I don't really see, like, a way I could have avoided that. Like, I don't see a way this team could really beat that combination unless I had maybe Discharge or I let Snorlax. But, yeah. If you find Joshua with a 1554 rating, usually it looks like it's going to be the QR code team of Sam Pandelis' team who used to get second place at the Pokemon World Championship. And if I remember correctly, this team has a terrible matchup against Mandibuzz. Like, Mandibuzz is absolutely devastating to this team. So, yeah, that's not going to be fun. I don't remember how... I don't remember how this was supposed to go.
Yeah, I can't lead Salamence. It's I think this is one matchup I don't think I can win. Just doesn't look good here. Um, if I'm able to waste the ground name Z on my opponent's side of the team, maybe because Wide Guard Celestia could clutch it in. Snorlax isn't that great here. I think Persian's okay here. Because of the fact I can stop a Roarville potentially. I'm gonna go Persian, Marowak, Salamence, and Celesteela. Let's see how this is gonna go. I really <laughs> I really don't know. Like, what I'm hoping for turn one. Gonna be able to get a fake out plus a Willisp off into the Mandibuzz on maybe a Lele's Protect. <laughs> and I honestly have no idea how this is gonna go. This is looking really bad for your hero. But let's see here. Persian Merak will lead the field against my opponent. How about I nine tail? So not the Mandibuzz lead, okay. So I could just fake out and shadow bone here, which would well I can't fake out. I get quashed though. Like, Quash is a very safe play. Yeah, and this Ninetales is Light Clay, actually. So, I'm able to get a Shadow Bone off and a Quash. Or do I want to prevent, like, Aurora Veil from being set up, which could be very crucial in this game. There's so many plays I could make here. Um, I think I'd rather let him get Aurora Veil up, to be honest. Uh, it's like, what's the trade? Do I want to get a top of lay, potentially turn one, which could be very bad? Actually, no. I'm pretty sure if, like, since this top of lay was very, very bulky, and one well, Ninetales didn't have protect, the fact that this top of lay is so bulky means it should be able to actually live one. So, actually, I'm going to quash Flare, but as we actually see the protect from Lele, so this is looking very, very solid in my favor, turn one. As if this is the Light Clay Ninetales, it should be on the QR code version. I will be able to just pick up a straight knockout onto this Ninetales, and bam. I honestly thought my opponent was going to Roarville Moonblast turn 1, but instead, going to be able to capitalize. I also knew Ninetales didn't protect, so no matter what, I could get a Flare Blitz in that slot. I guess worst case scenario might have been like a Garchomp switching potentially. Uh, but I thought maybe my opponent, like, no matter what, like, if you want to trade the Tapu Lele. Um, well, one, I couldn't even get rid of the Lele. I couldn't even get rid of the Lele, to be honest, as the Garchomp's going to come out. For my opponent's side, I will go for a. I think I, I could quash Shadowbone here. Which wouldn't be too bad. No, I can't quash because Garchomp's in the way. Right, right, right. I could parting shot. I could foul play. I think foul playing, or part. No, I want a parting shot. The top of the ladder, and I think I want to go out into Salamence here. I don't think you Moonblast my. I don't think you Moonblast my. What's it called? I don't think you Moonblast my <coughs> Marowak slot. I really don't think so. And I get a free switch in Celestia. And Celestia can kind of pick up some KOs. And with the hail damage, I should be able to... I think the top lane might be in range of my Super Sky Skystrike. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for right now. As I will be able to get in my Celestia. I don't know if my opponent's just going to go for Tectonic Rage or potentially just Earthquake. Or Swords Dance here. Like, if it's Swords Dance, I do have Persian in the back, so I'm fine. It's gonna be Tectonic Rage, so nice, nice. I catch the Tectonic Rage into my opponent. Well, let's see who he targeted. Maybe Persian, but I think it'd be Marak because you are threatened by Marak. Uh, yep, it is gonna be the Marak. I am charging my 3DS, so sorry about the noise. And it's gonna be the Calm Mind, but the Calm Mind really doesn't matter in this game or in this stage of the game because of the fact that you don't have a Roy Bell. Like, top of like Celestia is kind of setting up. I'm in a very solid position here. And I'm guessing that means my opponent's last Pokemon would be Arcanine. If it is Arcanine in the back, I guess that could be troublesome. Because if it is Arcanine in the back, potentially. Actually, who did I target with the Parting Shot? Did I target Lele or did I target down Garchomp? I did target down the top of Lele. Excellent. So. Um. So Arcanine could come out, which is a bit scary. Uh, Garchomp could SD here, which would be pretty bad for me, to be honest. Do I need Marowak anymore? That's the question. I think Marowak is good for like stopping Zerkage to set up. So I think I'm just going to protect here and lead to the top of the lay because one... Yeah, Garchomp's going to switch out. I'm guessing that's Arcanine. Yep. So I do call that correctly. I do call that correctly. 
So I don't need my Merrick anymore. Merrick's actually useless in this game. I, I could put in a Quash position or I could Willis stuff. But I don't feel like that those are going to put me in the best potential situations to win this game. So we are going to see the Moonblast come out. It's going to be out into Salamence. And I do Lead Seed here. The reason I Lead Seed is because I don't want to proc the Berry just yet. Because if I weaken the top of the uh, well enough, it's not really going to affect me too much. So Hail is coming out, which is also... Like, getting this chip damage on the top of the Lele is so huge right now. Because I'm getting all this residual damage into the top of the Lele. And I probably could heal something. I could probably heal my Persian. Well, I could heal my Maroc, but I'm probably going to switch in Maroc on the Salamence slot. Because I don't want to take a Moonblast for there. And... Yeah, I'll just protect here with my Celesteela. Go out into my Maroc. Because I don't want to lose Persian on a potential switch in. Like, what if my opponent anticipates a switch into Persian for self Steel? Like, although that's probably not very likely. Like, it's a possibility. It's always a possibility, which is why I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that here. So, we're going to see the Flare Blitz come out in the Cell Steel once again. And it's going to be the Psy Shock coming out into the Cell Steel. So, my opponent definitely expects a switch into that Persian. Would have actually been an amazing switch in right there. Uh. Yeah, but this cell Steela is physically defensive, so I think we actually should be able to take at least one Flare Blitz. Yeah, I think we should be able to at least take one Flare Blitz. Although I'm pretty sure Psy Shock plus Flare Blitz is going to come out. Uh, we do get this Leech Seed damage, and I'm not sure if that top lane is in range of Heavy Slam. It is super bulky, and we are intimidated, but I feel like we will be able to. And again, I really... Oh, he should Psy Shock, right? I could save the Maroc here and actually go in a Persian. Because you shouldn't. You should always Psy Shock the Maroc slot, I mean. Or switch out, which is okay here. So Garchomp's going to come out, which means Flare Blitz is going to come out. I don't need to steal a healthy eater. Like, I just need to get Salamence in good position, I feel like, and that will win me the game. So, get in Persian here. Let's see what my opponent's going to come out. Actually, Protect. Okay, so making a very defensive play here. Which, I'm trying, let's see, you protect Arcanine, but like, Flare Blitz was kind of a free play there. I just got a lot of damage, well, chip damage on your Garchomp, which is going to put in Earthquake range in the future once I get a Dragon Dance up. So that was going to stop, but what's stopping me from going for a foul play right now? There's nothing stopping me from going for a foul play. Like, I don't feel like my opponent can knock me out with a Rock Side plus Flare Blitz, so I will just go for Protect with my Celesteel up, and I'll go for the foul play here. I'll target down the Arcanine because I don't consider Garchomp a problem because I can always wide guard and that pretty much just shuts down this Garchomp. If I actually get rid of Arcanine, I could just win but with my Salamence just wide guarding plus uh, Dragon Dancing up. So Foul Play, going to do some nice damage. It's going to be the Swords Dance coming out from the Garchomp and that's completely fine as, you know, it's already going to be KO'd by the Foul Play. Flare Bit's going to go into Cell Seal and also the fact that, actually no, it doesn't even really matter at this point. Like. What does Soy Dance accomplish when I can wide guard? Yeah. Like, what does Soy Dance accomplish when I can wide guard? So, I'm just gonna wide guard here and foul play because, you know, Garchomp already wasted Z move. I can foul play to Arcanine for chip. As Ar Garchomp's gonna protect, I'm pretty sure that means it's gonna be like a Flare Blitz. Maybe a Will Wisp or Bulldoze, but it doesn't really affect the outcome. Because, again, this Garchomp can't do anything. It can't do anything. I have to target on the. Arcanine because it's the thing that's stopping me from winning with Celesteela potentially as the bear is gonna proc We do miss the KO unfortunately As let's see flare, but should be coming out. Oh, it's actually bulldoze. Okay, so that's a fair play yet <laughs> Wide guard still winning me this game boy <laughs> Like wide guard is still winning me this game And oh right bulldoze is a spread attack so nice 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 um great and what I can actually do now is lead seed the uh, Arcanine and foul play, I guess the Garchomp slot, because, ne you know, I didn't take the speed reduce. I'm able to pick up the knockout onto Garchomp, as Garchomp's actually going to switch out, which is a very solid play for my opponent part, and going to bring out Tapu Lele. And I knew that Garchomp, I, well, like one, I KO'd the Garchomp, two, I didn't have to really wide guard, so I could go for lead seed and get some recovery back with this Arcanine on the field, and Arcanine doesn't have the berry anymore, so it's already at a limited HP amount. And nice, we actually don't proc the berry, which is actually really good because my Salamence is looking very solid in this game. As the Flare Blitz is going to go out into the Persian, okay? 
Bleed Seed is going to come out into the Arcanine. So again, we're getting recovery. We're getting recovery. And at this point, it doesn't look like my opponent has ways to beat the Celesteela. Because the only way my opponent had for Celesteela is Arcanine. Arcanine's in foul play range. So I'm threatening a KO on that. Top of the lead, I should be knocked out by a Heavy Slam at this point at minus one. Yep, yep, yep. And I can just foul play the Arcanine and Heavy Slam. Like, my opponent really doesn't have a switch in. Arcanine's going to protect. Uh, let's see if the... So Top of the lead, it protects. Nope. So I guess that means they're gonna try and knock out Persian. That's good. That's good for my opponent. Yet, yeah. Like I think this game is pretty much over. I don't feel like there's any way my opponent could win this game because now I get to bring out my Salamence. I just I knock out the top of the lead here with the minus one heavy slam, and because it definitely kills at like 26%. Yeah. So I am able to knock out top of the lead there. I can bring out my guard, uh, my Salamence. Just click wide guard to be honest. Like wide guard or quick actually wins me this game. Uh, wide guard Celestia can 1v1 the guard chomp <coughs> very easily. And actually, I could just double protect. <laughs> There's so many things I can do. There's so many ways I can win this game. As long as I click either one to protect him or wide guard with Celestia, I do win the game. There's actually no way for my opponent to actually be able to finish this game. And that's where wide guard comes in. It really just shut down what my opponent could do. The Bulldoze, the Uroxides, and Earthquakes. Luckily, my opponent decided to waste the Z-move earlier, but luckily, uh, yeah. Like, that just ended up really helping us. So, I'm going to Wide Guard Earthquake be <coughs> because I can. Argonaut's going to protect, which I don't, know, I don't know you lose. Well, no matter what, my opponent can't win the game. And I think you go down to Lead Seed, if I remember correctly. What are you going to go for? Rock Slide? Salmon's is faster than the Garchomp. All right, this is like adamant, really bulky Garchomp. Um, but yeah, if it's Rock Slide and Earthquake, exactly the same set as Sam's, I will be able to KO it. SOS Ends comes out, and that's really not going to be a factor. Like, you can boost all you want. You can't actually touch me. Like, you can't actually, like, go for an attack. So, Arcanine does actually let the Lead Seed, but I can still Wide Guard an Earthquake. It's a very free play here. The only way Garchomp can win is if it actually has a move that can touch my Salamence here. Maybe if it's Stone Edge or something, it can maybe clutch something out. But no matter what, if we're not Rock Slide here, because we already saw Protect, we already know it has Earthquake because of Tectonic Rage. And also the fact that you have the Sword Stance. If it's Stone Edge, you can only hit one target. Helping Hand's going to come out from this Garchomp, so maybe hoping I don't go for the Wide Guard here, yet I have no reason not to. Um, if you have Fire Fang, you can't beat Marowak, plus Salamence combined. Like, no matter what, a combination of one of my uh, flying type of Pokemon plus my Marowak won the game if you don't have Rock Slide. And I do have Wide Guard anyway, so it prevents any chance of my opponent winning. So, Arcanine goes down. Garchomp is in low red. We're going to see the Rock Slide come out, and that is going to be the final move. However, yeah, cannot touch me. Like, it actually cannot. And that'll be a good game because now I can just go for an earthquake and I guess I'll go for a heavy slam into the guard chomp. Like no matter what, this game is sealed. And that'll be a good game. So luckily I think it really came down to one, the first turn play. Like the first turn play was really crucial in this game. Uh just the fact I was able to deny Aurora Veil, my opponent didn't save nine tails. I was just able to quash flare blitz. I don't think my opponent really expected that, but I was able to actually pick up the knockout nine tails. Which was great because if my opponent just went for an Auroraville, like, Calm Mind or Attack there, like, that's kind of what I expected my opponent to do. Uh, that's the one thing I was really expecting my opponent to do. Because, like, even if I quash your top of Lele, you're guaranteed Auroraville up. Sam's top of Lele is very bulky, so I'm very confident you can live a Shadow Bone with Auroraville up. And then you're able to get a lot of free damage, or you're able to get your setup on, or maybe you, you can just Moonblast the Persian, pick up a knockout potentially. And yeah, so protecting uh, um, just ended up working so well f in favor for me. I'm not sure. Um, not sure what was. I wonder what my opponent's thought process was. I'm just not sure it, what my opponent's thought process was. Like, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, it's a safe play. Maybe my opponent didn't know the calc with the Shadow Moon. Maybe it's like, I don't know. You just don't know what the top of the lay does, which is fair. Because Marowak is a very strong Pokemon with the Fit Club ability, doubling its attacks out, so it's a very heavy hitting truck. As we find in 1800? When we're in the 1500? Okay. If we actually beat this, that would be fun. 
Okay, Tapu Fini, Arcanine, Mimikyu, Snorlax, Tapu Koko, and Kartana. This is actually very, very interesting. I don't know what this match is going to come down to. Uh, Persian looks very annoying for my opponent. Like, Persian actually does look extremely annoying for my opponent. Like, Persian Lax actually can do a lot of work against my opponent, which seems nice. Electro Ball can also do a lot of work against my opponent. Um... Yeah, I think I'm gonna go Persian Snorlax, which seems okay here. Mimikyu is actually extremely annoying. I don't know how I'm gonna deal with Mimikyu, depending on set. If it's Twinkle Tackle, like, I think we're done. Like, if it's SD Sword Dance, Twinkle Tackle, I think we're done. Because I don't think I can actually beat that. Um... Yeah, I also don't like how many switches in that I have. I mean, I think I have, like, four Pokemon. Yeah, they're like, I want to bring all six of my Pokemon, to be honest, because they all have their potential roles in this game. Yeah, I think I want to bring Salamence, though. I think Persian Snorlax is definitely a safe call, having Persian, having Salamence in the back for Intimidate. And I feel like I do need a switch into Tapu Fini, because this team doesn't have a switch into Tapu Fini other than Snorlax on the field. Uh, Marowak's not switching to a Muddy Water slash Moonblast. I don't know what kind of sets my opponent's running, and this is quite an interesting take. I don't think I ever seen like a combination of Tapu Koko, Kartana, Arcanine, Fini, and then Mimikyu Snorlax. I've seen Porygon 2 Snorlax. I don't think I've ever seen the combination of this. Usually, you see, you see like the core of Garchomp, Arcanine, Celesteela, and Tapu Koko with that combination. But let's see the Mimikyu Snorlax. Interesting. Very interesting here. Uh, parting shot's a very safe play. I can parting shot. I think I want to parting shot the Mimikyu. Well, I don't want to. What I can do here is just high horsepower, get rid of the skies, and parting shot the Tapu Fini. Mimikyu's don't carry Protecto usually, so I feel like getting. Hmm. I feel like just parting shot's fine, and I'm just gonna high horsepower the Mimikyu because of the fact Mimikyu's don't carry Protect. If I parting shot into Tapu Fini's protected Scarf from Tapu Fini. Okay. That caught me off guard. That caught me off guard. I was that was something I was not anticipating. I thought it was like barrier scarf or something. Gonna be the taunt, which is okay here. I don't mind that. I do high horsepower into the Mimikyu. Okay. That was probably the worst turn one I could have got. Maybe I should have just went into the Celesteela turn one. Actually, looking back at it, looking back at it, maybe I should have definitely hard switched into the Celesteela. Oh man. This is not looking too good for your boy. Uh, we get Celesteela in. I'm getting wrecked right now. Scarf. Okay, I guess it makes sense for Cartana and Tapu Koko. <laughs> yeah, I did not see on the Mimikyu Snow Lex. Right. Um Don't know if my opponent knows the sets. I'll just heavy slam the Mimikyu. If it's Z Destiny Bond, I'm like, it's actually or a regular Destiny Bond. In fact, I'm pretty much can't win. I feel like I always spotted a Tapu Fini. As we are gonna see a Tapu Fini come out. And Snorlax is gonna come out. So Snorlax is gonna be my opponent's safe pivot here as that's Ghost DM? I think this is Z Destiny Bond. I think that has to be Z Destiny Bond. I don't see a reason why my opponent Yep, that's Z Destiny Bond. <laughs> for sure. So it's gonna be the Z Destiny Bond. And unfortunately I did target that Mimikyu down with the heavy slam. So maybe instead of what I should have done was just Bleed Seed, but the, my opponent could have just trick room belly drum there, and it was a very safe play for my opponent. So no matter what. I would have still been in a pretty bad position either way because I would have probably just been swept by the Snorlax at this rate. SL Steela is going to go down all the way and I don't know if we can win this. Uh, with that Tapu Fini still around, my Salamence is pretty worthless. That high horsepower did absolutely nothing. Wow. That high horsepower did absolutely nothing. So Tapu Fini is going to come out here and I can't do anything. Like Scarf Moonblast actually just stops me from being able to click a win. I don't see a way I can actually come through. So Intimidate's gonna come out on a Snorlax. Uh, maybe I could get a double or triple protect yet. I don't feel like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can win this game at all. Although I am gonna play to see what my opponent brought in the back because you know, information's always crucial. And if I ever face my op opponent with this team again, like I at least get the information here. Moonblast's gonna go on Salamence Belly Drone. Okay, so his Snorlax is faster than, well, slower than my Snorlax. Facade does a pretty good amount. It is going to be the Belly Drum here, and it looks like I won't be able to get any information. Unless Moonblast doesn't knock out my Snorlax. Maybe that's the one saving grace I have. Maybe I, I'll go for the double target in the Snorlax. Hope that um, 
Supersonic Sky Strike can pick up the knockout onto Snorlax with the facade and hope my opponent's last Pokemon cannot beat Snorlax. Maybe I hope it's like Arcanine. Maybe I can recycle stall my opponent's side of the team, but let's see here. I definitely do feel like my opponent has in the, this in the bag. Let's see if the Modest Moonblast can pick up the knockout. If it's timid, I could survive probably. I'm not gonna be able to KO the <laughs> not gonna be able to survive the Moonblast. This Moonblast just picks up the knockout. Facade's gonna go in the Snorlax, yet yeah, I can't do anything. Ah, uh, frustration's gonna come out and that's gonna be a good game. So very just well played for my opponent, I feel like. Uh the turn on Moonblast I think screwed me over. If I looked back back at it, maybe I should I don't know, like Scarf I never seen this kind of team variant before, so I wasn't exactly sure if it would be running. Scarfini on this kind of team, so I wasn't really too sure. Although it does make sense, I think Scarf Soak on that team does make sense because, you know, being able to soak Pokemon such as Celesteela for instance, and then hitting them with the plus six facade, or soaking a Kartana for instance, going for that plus six, well, frustration actually, it's frustration he had on my opponent's team, but going for that plus six attack on a water type pretty much spells your doom. Like, nothing's gonna take that unless you're Porygon too, or maybe like Max Defense Mandibus, but you get my point. It can pick up knockouts on Pokemon such as Celesteela, um, Kartana. It just picks up so many knockouts. I felt like m it's really smart to have Soak on that kind of team variant. Um, but yeah, looking back at the battle, if I could have done anything better, hard switch into MQ and I guess not going for the Heavy Slam right away. Because I was like, see, Destiny Bomb was something clicking in my head when I saw the taunt, but I wasn't too sure. Okay. He could either taunt here, which is definitely potential, or he could see Destiny Bond. Because, like, it's like a mind game in itself. Because if you go for the taunt there, and I go for, like, a Leech Seed anticipating the Z Destiny Bond, you can just see Destiny Bond next turn. But I guess in retrospect, Leech Seed was the correct play 100% of the time. So, yeah. Those were two things that I could have definitely done better. I think maybe if I just saved my, um, you know, my Persian turned around for fainting because Persian could have done a lot of work against my opponent's team. Maybe I could have pulled through, but alas, it's something that just got knocked out turn one. But hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 17 Vectric Battles. If you did, please leave a like down below. It really shows the support, as well as you can check out the social medias down below that I have, as well as the QR code team of Ralph Dude's team. This is the last episode we're going to be using it, so if you want to go check it out, check it out in the QR code down below in the description as well as go give him a follow on twitter you can go check out my side series on this channel as well and of course if you did like this video please leave a like down below it really shows your support as well as feel free to share this video as well and say anything in the comment section down below you can also pretty much actually no that's pretty much all i really want to say uh but i do have that new streaming schedule like i do have an idea of what i want to do um i'll be releasing it probably sometime this week or next week so stay tuned for that and it should be coming like in effect in the next two weeks i still am traveling i'm going back to new york city i don't know if like this video is going up before or during when i leave but basically, I'll be in New York City competing at the New Jersey Midseason Showdown. I love Gen events. Like, Gen Bamo is, like, one of the best TOs ever. And I do love coming down for events. So, spending a bit of money to come back to New York City and just compete at events once again. And I do really want to see the New York, New Jersey people. They are the homies. I love seeing them. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much all I really want to say. Thank you for all for tuning in. And I will catch you around in another video.